What's good guys and welcome to today's video. We're starting off with a bang. I'm about to take something very cool for a rip. That is Jack's side by side. I don't know too much about this, but all I know is it's got a spoolie boy right there and it's the cutest little thing ever. Oh yes, 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 yes. All right, spoolie chan, make sure we have some fun today. Um, this thing is, this is cool. I don't really fit in it so great. Um, like, my knees are like really high up in the wheel. If I wanted to make this nice, I could adjust the steering here, uh, but that's like bolted in. We're not gonna change or muck around with that, but we're just gonna have fun with what we've got. I don't have any GoPro set up. Oh, there's kind of a camera. We might be able to do something with that or I'll just stick you guys in my mouth like I normally do. So anyways, let's put a seatbelt on. Whoa, we gotta actually harness up then. Ugh, there we go. Jeez, this is new. I don't think I've ever been in a side by side where I gotta wear harnesses like this. I'm kind of scared. He said this thing's pretty quick. I mean, it's got a blitz boost controller, so who knows? This is an interesting harness, kind of. What, what? Does that go in there? Oh, I see. Interesting. I've never had a harness that does this before. Nice. Cool, that's simple. Let's go for a rip. And this has like a full tranny's mission and everything. Uh, E-brake. We can do some, uh, some drifties. Ooh. Feels kind of interesting. Okay, okay. What? Oh, oh my god. Okay, this is freaking me out. That turbo sounds so cool. <laughs> what the hell? That's crazy. All right, we're gonna go down to here. Yeah, boy. I love side by side. Oh my God. <laughs> this thing is insane. It's so crazy because the turbo is literally right behind you. So it, the sound this thing puts out is crazy. Jack has the coolest toys. <laughs> so that was four wheel drive. I want to put this back into two wheel drive and just see like, cause this thing wheel spins like crazy. Let's see if we can do some donuts or something. Kind of crazy. It just slipped. Oh, the sand's in my face. Ugh. Ugh. Any gators out there? This is Florida, after all. <laughs> that never gets old, Jack. Far out. This thing sounds so good. I gotta take it back before I crash and hurt myself. This thing's just way too much fun, man. <laughs> I can't get over this thing. Way too much fun. We're about to go into Death Mart. Ruddy's getting ready so he doesn't catch the corona. <laughs> I've never seen him be so prepared for anything. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So we are now out in the GTR cruising because we got some forged engine parts to pick up for the Miata, baby. Oh, this thing feels great. Can't thank Chris enough for letting me roll around in this thing. <laughs> yeah, boy. So we went with Manly Rods and Wiseco Pistons. There are some other parts in here that are for another customer, but we got our King Race bearings, ARP studs, our head gaskets over here. Um, there's still some more parts that are gonna be coming in in the next few days, but I am beyond excited. And I think the best thing about this is like, 
These guys go into a bunch of detail and measure and check every single one. And this is what's super important is that everything tries to match the best that it can so that when your machinist or you go to balance everything, that everything's as close as you can. So if you guys remember, we did a video a long, long time ago with an engine builder down in the south of Japan, and he was talking about how important it is to make sure everything's as evenly weighted and matched as possible. And it's good to see that kind of thing here with these con rods and stuff. I wish my pistons were here because I wanted to look at them, but that's okay. This is still exciting, we got parts. I'm pumped. Are you pumped? pumped. So pumped. How good is it that uh, we're building forged Miata engines? So it's excited. Better than not forged. It's better than not forged, that's for sure. I'm excited about just seeing what the low compression is gonna do on my 1.6 motor. That's, uh, I'm pretty excited about that. But we're also gonna probably be doing E85 at the same time, so. Yeah, but it's nice to have that option. Flex feel. A little more boost on my that's it, yeah. It's the most important thing. Just being able to have something reliable on 93 that's kind of consistent with the E85, but function over form is what I always say. And if the turbo you're doing is split quick enough where the torque's gonna be there. Yeah. Gonna be there. So it's not a big deal. It's, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. So Roberto's gonna be helping me with building the engine um, just because he's got more assembly knowledge than I do. So we're gonna bounce off each other when we assemble everything. But like I said, Machine Shop's gonna balance everything up, check everything. We're getting the, the block decked and honed by them. So everything's gonna come back looking schmick. Yeah, we're gonna triple check and assemble. That's it. Always triple check, quadruple Always. check. Always, because otherwise you'll wish you triple checked. Yeah. <laughs> Great spend spend another hour triple checking everything rather than rebuilding everything from scratch and a big hit to your wallet. I couldn't resist. I had to pull one out of a box. Look at that beautiful H beam. I'm excited. <laughs> you guys have no idea how pumped I am on this. Ah, so legit. It's like probably the most legit Miata build. <laughs> So after we picked up some nice engine parts, we're now at a random canal here in Florida, which if you know anything about Florida, they're everywhere and uh, we're fishing. If you guys remember last time I was in Florida, me and Roberto did a lot of fishing. It was a lot of fun. You just literally just go out to any canal that's within like, they're everywhere. They're like 10 meters away from you at all times. Florida's a giant swamp. Yeah. This is what keeps it from being, a, this is what makes it livable. <laughs> if we didn't have these, everything would be flooded all the time. That's right, yeah. And like, um, when was it? The other day when we went to Burnout Paradise, as Chris calls it, huge gator. Like, absolutely huge gator there. It was epic. So it's funny, like, gators used to be like the common thing you see on all these shorelines now. Yeah. Now it's iguanas. Oh, really? Yeah, we have an iguana problem. Iguana problem? Like water dragons? Yeah, well, they're an invasive species. They're not supposed to be here, but people keep releasing them. And now, like... They take over, dude. Crazy, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to try and catch some fish. I'll pick up the camera if we get anything. All right. We got everything loaded in the GTR. I'm getting ready to head back to the shop. Unfortunately, fish were not biting today at all. Uh, it kind of sucks, need to go fishing again. Maybe somewhere where there's a much better chance of catching anything, but I'm pretty pumped. Let's jump to the GTR and go rip it. So it is currently the next day. In fact, this vlog is kind of in three days all kind of pushed together. But uh, it's it's been very difficult to try and film my regular vlogs just because of how shut down everything is here in the states right now with the whole pandemic and stuff especially here in florida everything's been locked down now so pretty much everything's closed and everything i want to do that kind of like would be my you know filler um in between waiting for parts to arrive so we can start you know building the engine and dropping it in and stuff like that it's just been a nightmare to try and film if that makes sense so the next few days are probably going to be a little bit I don't know, we'll see. I'm trying my best here. I know you guys can see that probably. I'll try to do some live streams if, I, if there's nothing to film and stuff like that to just to try and like, you know, fill the void. <laughs> um, and it, it actually, it's, it's insane because it actually uh, makes me feel really weird because I'm so used to picking up the camera and filming stuff that I'm like, hmm, what am I supposed to do with myself now? It's, it's so bizarre because vlogging has just become this, this natural thing to me now. It's kind of crazy to think about. But anyways, we're in Ruddy's backyard and there's a disgusting pool here. Now, there was a deal made on Ruddy's channel that if I got 5,000 subscribers within 48 hours, I would jump in this thing. And we didn't reach it. And a lot of you guys seem to be very mad and keep asking me to still jump in this thing. But the deal was 5,000 subscribers in 48 hours and that didn't happen. Um, so that's why I'm not jumping in the pool, if that makes sense. Uh, one thing as well is a lot of people have been saying, why can't you just you know turn the filter on and save this thing? So I have been throwing some chlorine tablets and stuff in here to try and like kill some stuff, but um, 
the other day when I was getting ready to try and maybe put some more water in this and then get the filter running again, I realized that both of the uh, hoses here are split and cracked, both here on the filter. So this thing's not coming back, I don't think. Plus, I just don't think that anyone in the house really wants to like maintain this thing. You need a pool cover to stop stuff from falling in the pool. That's the biggest issue right now is the reason why the water is this color and why when you put all the chlorine and stuff in it, it stays this color is because of all the vegetation and stuff that's in the bottom of the pool. That's kind of like all just rotting and disintegrating in the water. By the way, there are roosters and chickens here. Every morning at 3 to 4 a.m. those roosters go off. It's kind of crazy. Look at this guy. Can you see him in the bushes there? Let's see if my camera can pick this guy up. He's literally this full-blown rooster right in there. Can you see him? There he is. You see him now. All right. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, but before I do sign out, I do want to say that I'm sure all of you are dealing with very similar problems with this whole pandemic, no matter where you are in the world. And I just want to encourage you, try to just get through day by day, take one step at a time. I know that things may not look too great right now, but I know we're all gonna recover from this. Everything's gonna bounce back stronger than ever. And I think we're all gonna be way more cautious as well in our flu seasons and things like that. And I think like we're all gonna learn something from this. It's insane what's happened in the world and what side effects, they're not even side effects, but what has actually happened as a cause of us all just stopping for a couple of weeks or a month because of this uh, pandemic. You know, I'm sure you've all seen in the news about the CO2 levels and how the world started recovering and all this kind of stuff. It's, it's kind of insane and I think it's gonna be good because it's gonna shift our mindsets a fair bit, but try to stay optimistic, guys. I know we're all gonna bounce back no matter where you are in the world. So focus on that. And with that, make sure you smash like, leave us a comment, more content is coming, don't worry. It's just a little bit of a difficult time. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. Jamata.